what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to upload data from your Raspberry Pi Pico W to Google Sheets in real time over the internet. In a previous video, if you guys know or do not know, I showed you guys how to do this exact same thing using a service that was initially free at the time called IFTTT, if this then that, that allowed us to set up this sort of thing very simply all within a matter of a few simple steps. However, since then, that service has been hidden behind a paywall, so you actually have to pay for that service. Hence why I'm making a part two to show you how to do this in a free manner using GCP, Google Cloud Provider, to be able to set up a service to allow us to do this really simply as well. So one thing you have to know before we get started is GCP is free to get started, so they give you a free amount of credit. However, you do have to have a credit card. Just know that you will be given enough credits to be able to easily do this without having to pay for anything. And also, as I mentioned, it's really simple. And I'll be walking you through step-by-step step from the code side to the GCP side. And if you haven't used GCP before, do not be intimidated because I'll be showing you exactly what to do in this video. So before we get into it, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get started. Okay, so first things first, we just want to set up our Google Cloud account. So we could just search Google Cloud on Google, and we could see that's the first one here. So we could just go ahead and select free trial. Now, I already created my account, and you just want to go through the steps to create your account. It is going to ask you for your credit card information, but do not be worried about that because this is going to be a very cheap application, and you are not going to go through through the free credits that they give you for your first application. So do not be worried about paying for anything. It will be free. So next thing we want to do after we create our account, actually let me switch to my other account here, is we just want to go to our console in Google Cloud. So you just go to console.cloud.google or, or click that link we just clicked. And you can see that I have this free trial here, so that's awesome. And we just want to create a new project I already have a project that I already did this on, but I'm just going to create a new one from scratch to show you how to do this. So we can just go to the top left here, and then in this modal, go to the top right, select new project, and we could just name it whatever we want. So let's we'll call it my project 2.0. Really, it doesn't matter, and you can do some other stuff. Uh, we can't use .0, so let's we'll call it 2. And then we can just go ahead and click create. That will take a moment to create, so we'll go back once it is done being created. Okay, so now that our project is created, we can just go ahead and select this drop down and go to that new project. And we just want to configure the Google Sheets API service in our Google Cloud account. So the first thing we want to do is we first of all want to get a credentials.json that allows us to authorize to be able to use the service. So in order to do that, we just want to search credentials here. Okay. And we could just click this one, credentials. And then we could just go to manage service accounts. And then next, we just want to create a service account. So we just go ahead and do that. Service account name, we'll call it random. It doesn't really matter. And then we could just create and continue. So I'll give that a moment to create, okay. And role, we could just select editor role, that is fine. And then we can click continue. And finally, we could just click done here. So that shouldn't be a big deal. So now that we have our service account created, we just want to click these three dots on the right here and get the JSON file. So we'll be using this in our Python code to actually authorize our ability to do this. So once we go here, we just want to go to manage keys. Okay. And we want to create a new key. And we just want to do JSON recommended. Okay. So now it looks like we have that key saved. So keep that at hand. That is a secret key, so keep that private. There is a bunch of information in that key that can potentially compromise your account. So do not share that with anyone. You do not want using that key or having access to this service. Okay, so now that we have our JSON, we just need one more step to enable the Google Sheets API service on our Google Cloud accounts. And that is the last thing we need on the GCP side of things. So in order to do that, we can just type in APIs and services in the top here. You can see I already typed that. And we could just select APIs and services. And then once we get to the screen, we could just go to enable APIs and services. And we just want to search Sheets. And we just want to enable the Google Sheets API service. So without doing this, you will get some authorization errors if you follow through the steps without doing this, which is something I realized. And it took me a while to figure this out. So show some love and like, comment, subscribe if you were stuck on the step, if you tried doing this yourself. 
So you can see really easy to enable that service and that will allow us to actually access the API to be able to send things to the Google Sheets. And so now we're done with everything on the GCP side of things. We're going to jump to our local computer setup because we actually have to set up a local Flask application running in Python on our local computer that will manage requests from our Raspberry Pi Pico W acting as the middleman to take that request and use the Google Sheets library or the Google uh, spread library to actually authorize our JSON to be able to send requests. Because as you guys know, one thing that we have a limitation for the Raspberry Pi Pico W is that it has very limited storage. So the library that actually authorizes us to use Google Sheets cannot fit on the storage for our Raspberry Pi Pico W. So we're going to create an intermediate application using Flask, which we're going to create a back end. And essentially that will just manage requests from our Pico W. So our Pico W will send the information to our Flask application, which will then use the JSON in our Flask application using the Google Sheets library, or sorry, the Google Spread library to actually authorize and send it to that Google Sheet. So we'll be walking you through that. Do not be overwhelmed. I'll be walking you through step-by-step step of how to do everything from scratch in Python to set up that Flask application. Thankfully, it's a really easy application and we'll be doing that next. Okay, so now that we have GCP set up, we're back on our local computer. You could see we have our Flask application here. So this is just really simple Python code that's running a server using Flask, which is a Python library that allows us to develop really simple or easily develop uh, backend servers for uh, running web applications. In this case, we'll be running a web application that allows us to process requests on a certain endpoint where at, at this endpoint, we'll be sending data from our Pico W over the internet and it'll be processing it and authorizing the JSON we're going to pass to be able to send that data to that Google Sheet. So you can just go ahead and create a Python script anywhere on your computer. You can name it whatever you like. I just called it flaskapp.py and you can just go through and copy the contents of this code as I go along. Really simple Flask application as you could see here and I'll be walking you through at a high level of what we are doing. So yeah, go ahead and create that application. And before we do that, we actually want to pip install the, the third party libraries we need to run this application. So we actually have to pip install Flask. And of course, I already have these because I ran this application before. So G spread. So this will allow us to authorize the creds from our JSON and OAuth to client, which is another layer on top of that. We're not going to get into too much detail about these third party libraries. Just know that OAuth to client and G spread are libraries that allow us to authorize this this creds file, or that is the JSON file we downloaded from Google Cloud. And Flask is the library that allows us to create a server in Python. And DateTime is just a native Python library that allows us to do some things. So we're attaching a timestamp to every uh, data point we are uploading to Google Cloud. So we could just go ahead and run this. I already have them installed, so it should be quick. So now that we have those installed, your code should be able to run once we go through and copy it. So yeah, initially all we do in this code is we are initializing a Flask application. Then we're passing in these scopes so once again, at a high level, we're just using those to be authorized on Google Cloud to be able to send the data to our Google Cloud Sheets or our Google Sheets. And then once we have that, we pass in the JSON file to the service account credentials uh, from JSON key file name, and we pass in the scope and the name of the file. So one thing you'll notice is it's called credentials.json, and we're just going to rename the file and put it in the same directory as our application. So if we want to do that, we could just go to where the file is on our local computer. So I believe mine's on downloads. And you could see that it's right here. So it named it this. So first of all, we could rename it credentials. Okay. And then we just want to drag it in to that application. So the same directory level, and I just called it credentials. You could see some of it. So. I mean, this is really sensitive information, so thankfully you didn't see the whole thing. But of course, you could see in this file, it has a bunch of information related to your accounts. And we're not going to go into detail about that because we do not need it in the scope of this video. So let's just go ahead and exit that. And I'm just going to close this in the left here. And then once we have that, what we're going to do is we're going to specify the Google Sheet URL that we're going to use. So this is a Google Sheet that I used at the beginning of this video. We'll specify it a new one, or actually we can use the same one, it doesn't matter, but I'll show you how to get this URL in a few moments here. So you're gonna to wanna to substitute uh, in for that. And then of course we do client.openbyurl. So this is using the G spread library. 
that allows us to be able to do that. And we, we point to sheet number one, so you can point to different sheets, which is cool. And of course, there's many other methods you can do this library. We're gonna do something very simple in this video and just upload to that sheet one using that sheet URL. And then we create this very simple endpoint in Flask. So we can, we can post to this endpoint. Post means we're going to send information to this endpoint, this upload endpoint running on our Flask application. And it's going to be expecting some data in our HTTP request. And once it receives that data, it's going to create a timestamp using the date time library. And it's going to append that timestamp to the data we are getting from the sensor. And it's going to append that row to the sheet. And of course, once again, there's many other things you could do with these sheet methods, but we're just going to add it row by row. And if you want to read more, to see more advanced applications of what you could do with sheets in this library, I suggest you read the documentation online. So once that's done, we just return data uploaded successfully if we process that data. And finally, what we have here is just, this allows us to run the Flask application. So that's a standard thing in, in Flask applications and we're just running it on that host port 3000. So that's all you have to know in terms of the Flask application. And once you have that ready to go, we could do down here is just clear and we could just run the Flask application by typing in Python and Flask app, okay? So if you did everything correctly, oh, command not found. So I believe on my computer it's Python 3, sorry about that. So if you did everything properly, you should see that all good and well. And one thing you may notice is if you do have an application running on port 3000 already, you may have to go ahead and close that other application so this one can work. Okay, so now that we have our Flask application ready to go, next thing is we want to jump to the Raspberry Pi Pico W side of things and create a micro Python script. I'm using Thani as my editor, but really you can use any editor you want. You could see I'm here and I have a simple micro Python script. And at a high level, what this script is doing is just sending values from our BMP280 sensor to that Flask application. And it'll be going over it in a little more detail in a sec here, but just be sure you are connected to your device. And so once you are connected and ready to go, you can just copy this code as we go along here. And in this code, what we're doing, first of all, is we're creating this machine, or we're using the machine library to be able to communicate with our BMP280 sensor. We are using uTime to import sleep, to measure time between intervals of readings. So we're just measuring readings every three seconds. So we're sending a request to the Google Sheets every three seconds, or first our Flask application and then Google Sheets. And the most important library we're using here is this UR request library. So this will allow us to post to that Flask application endpoint. And of course we are using network because we are sending requests over the internet to that Flask application. So we're using network to connect to our Wi-Fi. We have to be sure we are connected to the same Wi-Fi as our local computer in this example today. Next, I have this BMP280 library, which allows me to connect to my sensor. I am using the BMP280 pre-soldered by Shilatech. If you guys are interested in that sensor, I'll link it down in the, in the description below, but I would imagine people who are watching this video are most likely using a different sensor or different information. It doesn't even have to be a sensor. It could just be some time dynamic information that you want to send to Google Sheets. Next, I have this config library, and this config library is just a local Python script I set up that has sensitive information about my internet name and password. You do not have to do this. You could just copy in your internet name and password here directly as a hard-coded string. Some people in my YouTube videos get confused about this. You do not need this. You could just copy in your internet Wi-Fi name and password here directly. So please do not get confused. If you are, please let me know in the comment section down below. So now that we have those libraries understood, what we're doing here is just configuring some steps here to connect to the BMP280 sensor using I squared C in the BMP280 library. Next, we just connect to our Wi-Fi. This is just a standard method to connect to Wi-Fi on your Pico W. If you guys are familiar with the Pico W, this is essentially a no brainer. Now, the next step here is we just print connected to Wi-Fi. And this is an important one where we want to pass in the server URL of our Flask application. So in order to get this HTTP, all these numbers here and this 3000, what you want to do is you just want to go back to your Flask application and you just want to copy this bottom one here because this is the IP address of your Flask application running on your local network. So your Pico W has to know where to point to, to send, to, to send this request from the Pico W to the Flask application. So it sends it to this IP address port 3000. So we can just go ahead and copy that and paste it in there. You can see I already pasted mine in. And of course we need this upload extension because if you do not have that extension, as you can see, we have the extension there, it will not work. 
and also we'll be posting information to that endpoint. So if you try any other type of request, such as a get request, it also will not work. It has to be a post request. And in this loop, what we're doing is we're just taking readings from our device, our BMP280, so it only measures temperature and pressure. And we're just formatting it in the form of a JSON with data and we're passing in temperature and pressure. Really based on your needs, you can configure this however you want with any data structure you'd like. So you can go ahead and experiment and play around with that. And then we just try to post that response using the UI request library with that server URL. And we pass in the JSON, as you could see, and then we just close that response. And hopefully if you did everything properly there, you should be able to run this and start seeing a successful responses every interval or so. And last thing you could do here is you can actually play around with this interval here. So I'm sending data every three seconds. You don't have to. You can send it every 10 seconds, every minute, or, or however you like based on your application needs. Okay, so before we actually run the script, one thing we have to remember to do is we actually have to go back to Google Sheets and get that link I was talking about. So I have the link already in my Python Flask application, but you have to go and get it. And in order to do that, you could just go ahead and go to the sheets you are working with. And you could just go here and click share. And we could just go down here and do general access and anyone with a link can actually edit this Google Sheet. So we just want to pass that into the code. So we could just copy that link once we have that. And you can see you can also pass in the service account from your credentials.json file if you want to be more strict. So one thing you could do is you can actually go to that credentials.json file and you can go to that specific email in that, in that file and actually copy it in if you want to be strict and be sure that that link is not accessible to anyone. But really you can just do general access and copy that link as well. Okay, so we just want to take that link. And now that we have that link, we could just go back to the Google Sheet, I already have that link copied in and you just want to paste it in here. And once you paste it in there, of course you want to control C exit and start your application again. So now our Flask application is ready to go 100% and we could just go back to our Thani. And if hopefully if we did everything correctly, we should start seeing new values. So I'm crossing my fingers because things always break in YouTube videos. We just did this from scratch again. So I'm really hoping it works. Connect it to Wi-Fi. Sometimes Wi-Fi does, okay. Sometimes Wi-Fi does take a good amount of time to connect initially. It was quick there. So we could see we, we are uploading values right away. So we could just go back here and let's click done there. We could see we are uploading values in real time once again. I hope it worked for you guys. Really simple as you guys could see, we just set up a few applications. So a simple Flask application, some code running on our Raspberry Pi Pico W and a free service on GCP that allowed us to be able to do this. So there you have it, everyone. We were able to circumvent that paywall on the IFTTT service that was pretty much forcing us to pay to do this sort of thing. And we were able to create it from scratch and be able to do it all for free. So if you guys got it to work, please give yourself a pat on the back and consider like, comment, and subscribing to the channel. And also consider donating to the channel because I hope I save you guys some money. And with that saved money, you can consider donating to the channel because now we're able to do this for free. So that's awesome. Also, if you guys are having any issues, I know we went through a lot for you beginners. Let me know in the comment section down below. And also let me know what you want to see in future videos. If you want to consider, if you want to see more content regarding Google Sheets and other more integrated services with the Raspberry Pi Pico W, let me know, be specific. A lot of my inspiration for making videos comes from you guys. This video itself actually came from one of my subscribers who asked for this sort of thing. And I thought it was a cool problem that could save people time and money. So once again, stay tuned. Thanks for watching and take it easy, everyone. I will see you next time. I love y'all.